Oh, hi there, Frederick. You wanna go outside? Come on, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> what up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Today's video, as you can tell, it's over the band I shot up in North Dakota. I haven't told you guys a single thing about it because I wanted to wait until I got back home so I could not only tell you about the band, but we could also do an entire recap over the entire North Dakota trip. It was amazing. I have so much to tell you guys about it. But before we get going, I have to give y'all a heads up. This coming Labor Day weekend, DucksWaterfowl.com is doing 15% off everything on the site. Yes, so starting Saturday, I believe, Yes, indeed, Saturday through Monday, 15% off everything on the DucksWaterfowl.com website. And let me tell you what, we got these new hats. Y'all have been waiting for this pattern to come out. It is available, and it's actually the fullback hat. I actually wore one of these up in North Dakota. It was a little chilly. It was down in the 50s. And let me tell you what, they keep your head a lot warmer. I mean a lot warmer. They're a lot better in cold weather than the normal mesh backs, but we do have some new camo mesh backs available and some other full backs and a bunch of new styles of hats. Let me tell you what, lots of new designs on the website, so be sure to go pick something up this coming weekend, 15% off Saturday through Monday Labor Day sale, baby. So, so you guys just got to be waiting. There's a lot of new activity going on in the old pigeon loft. Some new pigeon videos will be on the way. I promise y'all, I promise. But let's start off by talking about the North Dakota trip. Before we get to the band and where the bird's from, because I'm telling you where this bird's from, it, it literally baffled all of us. Even Matt, the owner of Dirty Bird, was like, that's the last place I was expecting. It's pretty interesting, I'll tell you what. Look at the little Sherp though, I figured we'd come out here and admire, you know what I mean? But the North Dakota trip, number one, if any of you are like, you know what, I think next year, uh, maybe you're from Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, I don't know. If, you, if you're like, I think next year we're going to take an early honker trip up north. Guys, 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 if you're not from North Dakota, go with a guide, someone like Matt go with somebody like Matt from Dirty Bird. I'm not trying to push business to, to his front doorstep. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to warn you all, if you guys don't do that, you're very, it's very likely that you will not have a good hunt like we did. Being with locals is so darn important. I cannot stress it enough. If we hadn't have been with all the locals that we were, that Matt had, uh, there was that minimum, well, actually four locals that were scouting at all times. Um, if we didn't have that availability, we wouldn't have had the two banger hunts that we did. And we darn sure wouldn't have shot that band. Yeah. The reason is, guys, is because, uh, you know, down here in Kansas, when I'm scouting all the geese that we get, which is usually a bunch of snows and a bunch of lessers, you're talking thousands at a time. You know what I mean? You're talking roosts that are lifting with 2,000, 5,000, maybe 20,000 birds lifting all at once. Guys, the biggest feed that we hunted uh, was actually this little loaf where, where we shot the band. There were 200 birds hitting that loaf pond, and that was it. All the other field feeds that we hunted, the biggest was probably 120. Uh, the first day that we hunted, the, the really banger hunt out of the hay bale blinds, you're talking 80 to 100 bird feet, and we actually killed 31 of them. So, I'm just trying to put it in perspective to you all. Um, early honkers, it's just it, early honkers. Uh, sometimes they're gonna work really good. Sometimes they can just be extremely weary, like the last hunt that I put up, extreme weariness. They didn't wanna give it up, they didn't wanna get low, they, they didn't wanna stay horizontal to the decoys, they wanted to stay high. Uh, one thing about early honkers is, uh, if you get on them right, if you find the right feed, if you find the right situation to hunt them in, like the first two videos we did, you're going to get them horizontal to the decoys. They're going to be dragging feet over the water. They're going to be dragging feet on the field coming up to your decoy spread. That was huge, especially using the silhouettes like we did. The entire trip we used flocked dive bomb Canada silhouettes the entire time. And with them birds wanting to stay horizontal, what I mean is really low to the ground, coming to the decoy spread, they ate it up and they loved it. 
But on the third day, uh, we were having issues. The, the birds were a lot wearier. I honestly think that someone got to those birds before we did. They acted like they had been hunted. They didn't want to give it up like the past two days. Just extremely weary. But I wanted to describe, guys, I didn't go up there and just freelance hunt and, and have a successful three days by myself. I mean, and, and you can, you can. But to find those little bodies of birds, those little feeds, guys, during that time of year, there's hardly any crop off up there. Uh, we struggled to find cut wheat fields, struggled. And every one that we found usually had bales in it, which was great. If you can find a field with bales in it, that means there's structure out there and the birds are gonna be used to it. So you'll have a better hide, you know what I'm saying? But I stress you guys to be careful if you do plan to go up early honkers by yourself, it is rough finding finding those birds. There, there's just the concentration of them is so is so small. So this band, it's a uh, it's a remarkable thing. Very surprising that we shot a band at all. You know what I'm saying? So before we get started here, and I give you all this information on this bird, which it's special to me. You know, uh, this is the first band that I have ever won in a drawing. Now, guys, what I mean about drawing, I actually didn't film it. I wish I would have, but a lot of times, use you a good full back hat like that so you can't see through it. Uh, you put, I don't know, what did we do? There were seven shooters, so we put seven different shells in the hat, and everybody draws. I was the last one to draw, and the last one to win. I actually drew uh, the shell that was two shot, and uh, old Nick, he's like, hey, whoever draws the two shot shell, is the winner because that's the only one in there sure enough last pick and i won it Nothing but practicing my calling guys the season is upon us you guys need to be practicing but here we go this is the band check it out I want to show you guys I uh, actually didn't want to take it off my lanyard because the more I keep bending it right here it's liable to break because it's literally so thin and then right here you can tell a BB did hit it how neat though uh, band number 1148-17733 here is all the information on it right here I actually have the entire certificate that says hello dear Bobby Guy thank you for reporting band number 1148-17733 so you guys have to drop a comment down below what is the oldest bird uh, what is the craziest bird banded bird that you've ever shot where is where was it from you know what I'm saying so we hunted Basically, Jamestown, North Dakota, around there, and uh, early season, so nothing was migrating yet. I think this is what's the catch-22 of this whole deal. Nothing was migrating yet. You know what I'm saying? It's August. This bird was, uh, was banded July 2nd, 2014, so that wasn't a long time ago. Hatched in 2013 or earlier, it is a female, but here is the big catch-22. Banded near Ponca City, K County, Oklahoma. What the heck is it doing up there? You know what I'm saying? Because here's the thing, is they usually ban birds. Actually, they do ban birds all the time in the off season. So July, June, I don't know, August maybe? I've never done it. I really want to ban some birds. But in the off season is when they ban, ban birds. So this bird was banded in the off season and then shot in the extreme early season of August 2019. Pretty, pretty wild that a, a bird was banded a state south of my home state, but then I go way, way north. It's not even migratory time, you know what I mean? They're not flying. They, they are not migrating yet. And I shoot that bird way north of my state. Just, just pretty interesting, you know what I'm saying? None of us ever, ever, ever figured that the bird was going to be from Oklahoma. Uh, that area in North Dakota, uh, Minnesota, up there, close to the border of Canada, 
they do a lot of banding up there and a lot so we we're like oh for sure that's a local bird you know what i'm saying probably from around the area no big deal the boys all went into town to go get some food and stuff so i was like hey i'm gonna i'm gonna turn in this band and, and i'm gonna see where it's from and i'm gonna chill out and edit some video and they're like okay well i called them and i'm like you'll never guess where it was none of them could guess and when i told them matt was just like i have never saw a banded bird from Oklahoma come out of North Dakota at all. So, if any of you have ever shot a bird from Oklahoma, uh, drop a comment down below. What was the date it was banded? It's pretty, pretty interesting because that's so southern. It's so south. You know what I'm saying? Wild. Just wild. Fred, heel. Good. Sit. Fred, place. Good. Sit. That's a good boy. That's daddy's boy right there. That's daddy's boy right there. Had a lot of you guys been uh, messaging me about Fred and you're like, Bobby, uh, what type of obedience did he have? Because he's really good and he is. He got, he got four to six months of obedience uh, from my partner I got him from. So he'll be ready to go this season. I literally just know he will. So, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it wasn't jam packed full of crazy shooting and, and goose hunting I know I know I miss it already myself the North Dakota videos went way too fast uh, but I'm glad that it was a good trip I am extremely stoked that I got a band out of the deal insane I know you would think that I'd have a lot more bands on my lanyard but here in Kansas guys we do not shoot a lot of bands you're dealing with lessers here not honkers so uh, with the abundance of lessers uh, a, a banded lesser is a is a unicorn. It, it's not as abundant as a honker, if if that makes any sense. So uh, I've heard that the lesser hatchery report is up 550 percent. So that is just insane, incredible numbers this year. The ducks are up a little bit. The snow numbers are up from last year, which is good. Thank goodness. You know what I'm saying. But um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want me to do a hatch video over this year's hatch, maybe we can talk species and, and numbers and what we should be expecting to see. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys want to see for videos. Uh, dove is right around the corner. You guys be expecting dove hunting, teal hunting. The season is upon us, guys. It's pretty much knocking out the door now. But be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Hit that little notification bell down there. It'll notify you every single time your boy uploads but like i said labor day sale duckswaterfowl.com 15 percent off of everything saturday through monday gonna be a good one don't miss it don't miss out on saving a little bit of jack but until next time